there's a, a strong linkage between climate change and health because we're going to see huge effects on uh, the general uh, state of health of populations around the world with the effects of climate change. Just seeing food security, people not having access uh, to food, who are not getting uh, the right nutrition, and seeing uh, natural disasters uh, like we're seeing in the Philippines currently where uh, many of uh, the first ones on the scene are doctors trying to help people in really, really uh, poor situations. So there is a strong language between the two. Fantastic. And if you could explain what you're doing at your conference on Saturday uh, to uh, help the situation. Yes, so IFMSA, our operation, we sit in, an, in a global climate and health alliance together with a few other or a lot of other um, organizations that focus on health, the World Medical Association, World Health Organization, um, Health and Environmental Alliance, and a lot of other organizations. And this Saturday, we are hosting a summit um, that looks at the linkage between health, uh, between climate and health, try to put focus on it. Um, we have um, one of the IPCC vice chairs coming to present the findings of the working group on health and adaptation where we need to act more on climate and health. Obviously, there's a lot that needs to be done to help people uh, suffering ill health. Um, how do you justify talking about climate change when there are so many other priorities? Uh, I think it's extremely urgent that we talk about climate change now because now we have time to act. And as uh, one of the major uh, medical journals uh, said a few uh, years ago, that climate change will be uh, the, uh, have the greatest effect on global health in the future. It's going to be um, devastating for our health and well-being. So we need to act uh, now in order to secure our safety in the future. What concrete actions can people take uh, in terms of um, tackling these problems of climate change and health? Concrete actions? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's emission reduction, obviously, of course. And it's, yeah. it's, it's, I mean, for instance, we're here in Poland, where all the, um, where all the energy or a lot of the energy comes from uh, non-clean energy. They come from coal. Um, six of the city, the major European cities that are mostly polluted are in Poland and it's very bad for you. Like, first of all, you can get acute respiratory diseases but also secondary uh, pulmonary cancers. Um, so we need to take action and, and have our governments invest in clean, clean, um, clean energy for us. That's the mitigation front. And on the adaptation front, what can countries uh, do to prepare for the challenges of climate change? I think Sean. Okay. For instance, if you look at Europe again, where we are in Europe, one of the challenges we have is, for instance, heat waves and cold waves. And it's important during heat waves to have early warning systems to warn elderly that are sitting alone in their houses that we have a heat wave coming on. Um, it's important to, to have pre disaster preparedness. Um, so I think that's one of the major messages where we can prepare on the concrete level and on the adaptation side of it. And then it's also, again, more, more um, long-term looking at health systems and health systems in general are one of the biggest emitters of our country, so that's again mitigation, but it's one of the biggest emitters, um, so it's investing in greener healthcare systems. There are a lot of issues that you're going to have to take into your summit on Saturday. Um, what are the one thing from both of the, that you that you hope to achieve at the summit? Um, we hope to achieve that people understand the strong linkage between health and climate change and understand the effect it will have on all of our well-being and our public health in general in the future and try to encourage uh, people to act, uh, both uh, themselves to act and, and try to take all of these considerations in, uh, into their, their own behaviour but also getting politicians to understand that this is an investment for them, this is something they have to do in order to invest in the future and the future well-being and public health of us all. And to understand that, uh, that climate change is an exacerbator of a lot of current issues, health issues in general, but also development issues, and it's important to invest in climate change and, and mitigation in order to tackle those, and they go hand in hand. So, uh, so, so when we invest in that, we also see, um, see better health for our people.